All right, and Space Watch, Israel's mission to the moon Thursday failed in the final moments before landing. A small nonprofit called Space IL organized the mission, which cost about $100 million. And despite a somewhat somber mood at the command center, the team remained optimistic. Newly re-elected Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was also there. Let's take a listen to the final minutes following the crash. The main engine is back on, but we have lost communication with the spacecraft. We had a failure in the spacecraft. We unfortunately have not managed to land successfully. If at first you don't succeed, you try again. All right, joining me now from the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida, is CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood. Bill, good to see you. Hey, thanks. Good to be here. All right, we've got a lot to talk about, especially when you talk about space talk. But the biggest question, uh, of course, the failed mission uh, to the moon on Thursday. Why is the space race amping up again? Well, you know, it's really interesting. In the case of Israel, uh, they were originally competing for something called the Google X Prize, which was trying to encourage uh, private industry, smaller groups to send spacecraft to the moon as part of a competition. That ultimately was canceled, but Space Hill, the a uh, nonprofit that was trying to do this kept at it, uh, got some got some industry help and put together this hundred million dollar mission to go to the moon, which was really uh, quite exciting for folks who are proponents of commercial space flight. And that's really the answer to your question. You know, NASA has been directed by the Trump administration to put astronauts back on the moon within uh, five years or so, somewhere like that. And NASA, of course, to do that wants to involve much more private industry, much more of a commercial effort. And so all of this is kind of playing forward to that. Uh, everybody thinks that commercial uh, participation is going to be required uh, to get humans back to the moon. And, you know, the mission we watched uh, today, unfortunately, didn't work. But it shows that, that private companies, private concerns can, in fact, send spacecraft to the moon. They didn't land, but they got there. They got into orbit. They sent back pictures. And that's a pretty impressive achievement in and of itself. Yeah, it most certainly wasn't a happy ending there. Uh, what went wrong during Thursday's attempted landing? Well, that's anybody's guess right now. The engineers in Israel may have some clue by now. All we know on the outside looking in was that uh, the descent started normally. The engine was firing. It was heading down toward the surface. Uh, they ran into some communications problems and then some glitches with the main engine. Uh, we don't know the exact sequence of events, but somewhere in the range of 8 to 10 miles above the surface, uh, something went wrong that it couldn't recover from. Uh, they lost contact, and then, of course, they lost the spacecraft. That's just heartbreaking because you put so much work and time and effort and money into these projects, and when they don't work, it just stings for everybody. Uh, let's move on oh, to sure the does. SpaceX launch. Yes, uh, it's the second flight for the most powerful rocket in the world. What does the success of this rocket mean for space travel? Well, if nothing else, it demonstrated that SpaceX is really mastering this technology to recover these boosters, refurbish them, and then relaunch them. The Falcon Heavy is the most powerful rocket in the world, and its, its first stage is actually made up of three Falcon 9 core stages bolted together, as you can see here. The two outboard boosters flew themselves back to pinpoint landings at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. I got to tell you, I've watched a lot of launches, but it's extraordinarily impressive to see these two rockets coming down side by side, executing these synchronized landings, as, as, if you will. Uh, just an impressive thing. And then a minute or two later, the central core vehicle uh, successfully landed on an offshore drone ship. So SpaceX is perfecting this technology. Uh, it's certainly something that will help drive down cost. And it also improves their f schedule flexibility because they've got such a backlog of boosters on the ground that they can process again for another launch. So I think it's, it's another sign of this commercial space activity that's really taken off recently, sparked in part by SpaceX uh, to really open up the high frontier to the private sector. Uh, you definitely have the coolest job on Earth. A final question for you. On Thursday, NASA researchers reported that astronaut Scott Kelly, who spent a year in space, experienced some alarming changes to his body while in orbit. Uh, these included mutated DNA, cognitive issues, even exposure to new bacteria. So is space travel safe now? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. The, the effects they're talking about were, to you and me, fairly subtle. Um, if they become factors at all, I think it's more of a concern for really long-term space flight. You know, if you send people out into the solar system years from now on, on you know, multi-year missions, uh, some of these things, will, will, they'll have to develop countermeasures. But on the whole, uh, they wrapped up this research they've been doing for the last couple of years, 
and concluded that remarkably, most of the changes that he experienced in space, you know, really returned back to their baseline states once he was back on Earth for a couple of months. So I think the overall thrust of the report was positive. There are things that are concerning that are going to have to be dealt with, but I didn't see any showstoppers uh, for future long-term uh, exploration. All right. You are the expert, and it's always good to see you, my friend. Bill Harworth, thank you. Sure thing.